Well guys, we're back on Project Yukon. I uh, got into it a little bit more there yesterday. I uh, gave her a good power wash and cleaned up the rims and the tires and revealed a lot of different things. The uh, bodywork on this truck would be something that I think a project in a school would be perfect if you wanted to try and teach students different examples of either be it rust repair, you've got scratches you could practice buffing out, you've got scratches combined with dents, you've got smaller dents, you've even got things like hood creases. You've got where the door has dropped and it's rubbing on the lower part because the hinges are bent. You've got dents in the front corners. You've got bumper cover damage, grill replacement. I tell you, for a, a student learning, you would have all kinds of adventures. Like, tell me how this happens. There's a, a wow right here in the door frame. Was, was there like something in there and the door got slammed on it? Uh, scratches, I've said that already. Dent right here. But I can't get over the fact that this is right next to glass, right next to the rack. Not, neither one got hit or broken. Even some of the plastic is scratched. One thing this doesn't have, that most of them do have, is it's not rotten around the wiper motor or the key switch. I think it's been repaired, that's probably why, but uh, a little bit of everything for the body guy. But I got into it, I, I think I told you the seats and the interior were pretty much wrecked, so I took everything out. You can see the carpet there, see how that is there? That carpet I think most people would just throw it away. Uh, it's been used as a truck, not a, a moving passenger vehicle. But uh, I thought I'd give it a shot. The front was identical, it was just as bad, hard to even tell what color it is. Took it out and took it to work with a hot power washer and some spray nine. It dried overnight and this is the result of it. It's, I don't know if you'd be able to see that very well in all the sunlight, but I'm very impressed by its condition to be honest with you. It's not bad. It's got a few stains where the floor mats would sit, but the floor mats would actually cover that. But the actual carpet quality itself is not bad. It hasn't broke down. There's no burns. There's no like glue stuck to it or anything like that. Just a couple dark spots basically where the floor mats will sit and cover it. I'm sure if I worked a little harder at them, I'd get them out too. But there was a couple spots in the front driver's side and passenger side floor pan. The insulation was too wet and moldy and that's got to go. If anybody's got any ideas on how to replace that, just in case she, I didn't show you, I got the rims done for daughter's step side. Got them clear coated, looking a lot better now. But in here, the garage, is the, uh, the seat itself. Now I was lucky enough my neighbor was redoing his seat. And he hung on to the old parts. He had bought a seat for parts for the for the power motors and stuff, but it wasn't even the right color. His seat was that color. So he replaced all of his stuff and he gave me what was left over. And the seat he bought, the leather's good. The back's got a little bit of a wear mark in it, but it's no way compares. These are the seats I pulled out of it. You know, they're just it's tore up. It's cracked. So I'm going to replace both the uh, the entire back of the seat I was given with this one, and then I'm going to if the sponge I don't think the foam's any good on this. I'm going to take them both apart and see which one has better foam. But I'm I'm leaning towards the one he gave me. His truck barely had any miles on it, and then uh, recover this tore up one. The passenger side doesn't have any rips or tears in it. It just needs a good cleaning which is par for the course with passengers. Got the back seats out of it. Same thing with the back seats. They're a little bit, they're dirty. Need to be cleaned. Good cleaning, good scrubbing, conditioning. Should save them. 
But uh, if I get into the seat covering, I'll show you. If not, that's my update. I got back into the motor. I do need injectors for it. So I'm not going to get into that just yet. As of yet, I haven't spent any money on this thing. So I might just wait and see if uh, somebody gives me some injectors. You never know. I need to... I got a line on a, a truck with a 5.3 motor in it and some parts for the grill and some interior parts that I can use for this. So if I get that cheap enough, I'll have everything I need. There's no point in going out and buying 400 bucks worth of injectors if I'm going to have a spare motor kicking around. So if something more exciting happens, I will let you know. See ya. Well, good morning, YouTube. Getting cold out there Saturday morning. Uh, I believe we're already into November now. It's November 1st, uh, day after Halloween. Yep, I confirm. Uh, not much of an update. Didn't do too much since the last video you saw there. I've kind of just been uh, in a holding pattern. Too much work, not enough time. Too tired at night. But it's Saturday morning, and as far as I know, I don't have any plans today. Uh, wouldn't mind getting this interior out of here. Uh, I got a leak on that truck though I need to fall solve that leak first before I start putting all this carpet and everything back in the truck. Picked up this uh, truck cover. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, I just when I'm working in here grinding and sanding or welding everything lands on the on the 57 and it's just a mess it's kinda hard to clean up in the middle of winter so I figured something cheap is 40 bucks at Princess Auto. It fits pretty good. Where else are you going to find a car cover for 40 bucks for a 57 Chev pickup? It'll do the job nicely this winter because I think the only thing I'll be doing to this truck this winter is pulling the motor out and working on that motor and tranny setup to put the T5 in it. So that's uh, going to be nice. I'll be able to push that off to the side as far as I can and throw a cover on it and not have to worry about uh, all over spray or whatever's happening from grinding and whatnot landing on it. So there you go guys, it's Saturday morning. Uh, got a couple projects I might get into today. Uh, if it's cleared up enough I'll pull the 57 out. I've got a remote starter slash power door lock doohickey thingy. It was cheap. I put that in my daughter's truck. I really just want it for the power locks to remotely open them for her so she does, she's not fumbling with keys at night. Uh, can give her, take or leave the uh, remote start of it, but uh, we'll uh, see if we get into that. A lot of wiring and nothing I can't deal with, but it's just complicated programming and everything else. I just don't like them. Anyways, maybe if we get ambitious enough, I'll dive into that. There's the uh, fuel pump out of that Yukon. Fellow gave me the old one. He said this one's only about a year old. When it was broke down up north, they put a new one in it. But uh, there's plenty of crap down in there, and I'm sure it's been rinsed out since I got it. This was broken. It's supposed to be uh, sitting down inside of there, and the mount's broken on it. The little plastics broke off, but I don't know if that happened previous or that happened uh, after they took it out. So it's possible that it, that's the screen. The, fuel was bypassing that screen maybe and getting into it somewhere else. It was all apart in pieces when I got it. I just kind of put it back together loose, but we'll see. Anyways, guys, nothing too exciting. Early Saturday morning. Sun's not up yet. We shall see if we get into anything exciting. Till then, see ya.